of North Carolina, also the Greater Raleigh Sports Alliance. We are here at Sticks and Vines in Durham. I'm your host, Donald Ware. We thank this outstanding crowd that is with us. A lot of people have on their HBCU paraphernalia. Those that are, as a matter of fact, watching us uh, live stream, we appreciate you doing so as well. We've been joined by Shaw head football coach Adrian Jones, North Carolina Central head football coach Trey Oliver, Elizabeth City State head football coach Marcus Hilliard, and in the last segment, we were joined by Fayetteville State head football coach Richard Hayes. Joining us now on the countdown to kick off, Maurice Flowers in his second season as the head football coach at Johnson C. Smith joins us here on the countdown to kick off. Coach Flowers, good to see you. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, just a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Your thoughts on the 2022 season? 22 season, a uh, season of transition. Uh, when you're hired, probably January of 22, and uh, brought in and really just <laughs> started laying the foundation. Uh, Johnson C. Smith doesn't have the long tradition that some of the schools here have of really good football. So we just, you know, just started just step by step. Brick by brick, and uh, the season I felt was very competitive, so we, we made some strides. Second spring practice under your belt as the head coach there in Charlotte. Um, your thoughts in terms of how spring practice went? Very productive, uh, very productive spring. Uh, the thing that we looked for out of spring practice was, uh, was this team better than the team that finished game 10? And it was, uh, without a doubt, easy to see. So, yes, uh, you know, we we, had, we brought in 53 freshmen and uh, 12 transfer portal young men to the team. And so uh, a bunch of new guys. And uh, so now they had time to go through off season, get stronger, get faster. And it, you could tell. And so uh, it just was a totally different team that took the field in the spring than what finished the season. Well, you don't know, but those that don't know, an offensive guru, quarterback uh, guru, you played a couple of quarterbacks on on last year. If the season were to start today, who would be your starting quarterback? It's, it's not. It, there's no com quarterback controversy. It's Tyrell Jackson. Uh, we we played three quarterbacks last year, but it wasn't by design. Uh, Tyrell Jackson was injured early in the season. Uh, at the time he was injured after week four or five, he was number seven in Division Two in yards per game, matching 330. Uh, so we lose him, and he's also a guy that knew the system. He transferred with me from Fort Valley State, where he's one of the better quarterbacks in the in the conference, in the SIAC, and uh, we anticipate him having a very big year. Your first year back, I would say first year, but your first year back in the CIAA. You know, what are some of the differences you saw in terms of play in the SIAC and then play in the CIAA? SIAC, an outstanding conference. Um, lots of good athletes, lots of talent. Where I would say the biggest difference now with the CIAA is uh, universities are funding their, their, school, their programs better. Uh, you know, you see schools, uh, for instance, Fayetteville State, uh, with maximum amount of scholarships, coaches, and a lot of other schools following suit. So the biggest difference, I would say, is the support financially with um, just everything you need to have a winning program with the resources. That's what I see. Now, Col Brevin Caldwell comes back for you, right? So your wide receiver is the first team all CIAA kid had, I believe it was 53 receptions or in, in excess of 50 receptions uh, on last year. How much better do you think he can be in 2023? He's already shown it. He's a uh, different young man. Uh, first thing, he, when I talk, think about Brevin, I'll start in the classroom. 3.9 GPA and has a really good focus. He's one of our local Charlotte guys and uh, he works, uh, his work ethic is, I, I can't even complain, compare it. Uh, you know, he and the quarterback, they're here for the summer uh, on campus, and they're just getting a lot of work in. I mean, they, they call and say, Coach, can we go on the field at 10 o'clock at night because uh, somebody's getting off work late. And, uh, you know, you never tell a guy he can't get work in. So I look for Brevin Caldwell to have a really big year. 
some of the other guys? You mentioned the quarterback, talked about Caldwell, some of the other guys you expect to step up offensively for you. Offensively, uh, I'm excited about our running backs. Uh, we have the Newman brothers. Their father, Tim Newman, was a Johnson C. Smith Golden Bull, played for the New York Jets shortly, and uh, his oldest son, Tim Jr., uh, transferred to us last year from uh, Presbyterian, and uh, the younger one, Jacob Newman, was an outstanding back uh, with South Mecklenburg High School in Charlotte and turned down a couple of FCS offers to stay home and be able to play with his brother and, and, and help us build a championship program. And so uh, I'm, I'm excited with our running backs. Uh, offensive line, a lot of good ones coming back. Uh, you know, our, our offensive line is coming back. We, we really didn't lose much. So we're excited about the direction, every position. Big Nate, I, I want to talk about Jalen Alexander because he's all CIAA or rookie, all rookie CIAA, I should say, at defensive end. Um, but, I mean, I'm sure you got some of the guys you're expecting to step up also. J.A., as we call him. J.A. Uh, uh, will be a sophomore, just improved as the season went along. That's the thing with freshmen when you play that many. They're not the same. Uh, at the end of the season that they were, as they were at the beginning. He made progress throughout the season. He's going to have a big year. Uh, he's bigger, stronger, faster. And uh, then we'll go to linebacker, uh, Benari Black, uh, another Charlotte native. And Jalen Alexander's from Charlotte. He went to South Mecklenburg, teammate of Jacob Newman. And Benari Black went to West Charlotte High School and started off at UNC Pembroke and was a leading tackler. And now he transferred to Smith last year and had a big year. He'll be back and uh, in, the, in the secondary. We'll have Jacoby Clement that'll move from cornerback to safety. Uh, that's outstanding young man. Oh, wow, he happens to be out of Charlotte also. So he went to Mallard Creek High School and uh, was at Fayetteville State at one time. And uh, now he's at JCSU looking for those guys. I just looked at all three levels, the secondary, the linebacking core, and D-line. We'll have some good uh, experience in all of those positions. To Johnson C. Smith, you're at home in Charlotte on a couple of levels. You're from there. You were a great athlete there. You're plant. You're coaching, head coaching, um, at your alma mater. Um, and, and as a matter of fact, you shared with me. I didn't even know this. You played basketball while at Johnson C. Smith, which that's unheard of today, where guys play football and basketball. I, I did. I played basketball. I did. I, I played one year and then saw that it was just too much on the body. And uh, and I, I need to help my team win some more football games. So put some more time in the football. But uh, great experience at Johnson C. Smith. And very glad to see our university just putting such an emphasis in growing the university academically and uh, in athletics. Uh, the university is going in a totally new direction and uh, with the new leadership. And I'm just proud to be back home. Yeah, so what does that mean to you, to be the head man back at your alma mater? It, what it does mean is that uh, we, we want to make sure that there's a big change. Uh, I played at Johnson C. Smith, was a three-time All-American, but uh, a quarterback, but what I can say is we didn't win any championships. Uh, to come back, that's the focus. Uh, we want to build a winner in Charlotte, North Carolina, Johnson C. Smith, and, and uh, we, that's what our focus is. We're building good team chemistry. Uh, we're really a big concentration on our culture. Love the young men that we have and how we're growing together. And I'm just glad to be the leader of the football program. And then lastly, can you speak to how important it is to sort of get out and start the season off right? Because you got to stretch in the middle, well not really middle, but towards the beginning middle of the season uh, where CIAA games, where you're on the road for three straight months to a good start. Uh, this is something that we talk about with our young men is that uh, for first, Johnson C. Smith hasn't won a home opener in, in more than 10 years. And so that's our focus. And, and we just, we, our focus is really just one day at a time. You mentioned the schedule. I haven't even looked at it because I'm so tunnel vision on day by day. Uh, but if we do the right thing day by day, one brick at a time, and uh, just keep building, as, as our saying is uh, everything every day. And that's what our focus is. That when that three-game stretch comes, we'll be ready for it. Uh, we're, we're, we're looking forward to it. The CIAA is just growing. Every team is going to be improved. Uh, the coaching is better uh, this year. Again, the, the athletes are better. Uh, it's just, I look, there's going to be so much uh, competition throughout the conference. And we're looking forward to it. Give it up for Maurice Flowers, the head football coach at Johnson C. Smith.